morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Kelly, Danny's oldest sister. Standing up here in front of all of you is not what I want to be doing today. But standing up here in front of all of you today is the greatest privilege of my life so far. To be able to capture the essence of my brother in a few short minutes. Danny and I had a bond and a connection greater than it had with anyone else. Now let me be clear, and may or may, may not be accurate, but that's how he made me feel. <laughs> I'm sure anyone who had the privilege of being his friend or his family may believe that their bond was greater than anyone else's as well. Danny had a way of making you feel that way. He was interested in you and how you were feeling and how he could ease your burden or make your day just a little bit brighter. He made sure your needs always came first. He was the most selfless human being that I've ever met in my life. Since the beginning of February, um, I've been dealing with a personal situation that many of you are aware of. February, March, April, May, June, July 7th, my father's birthday at 8.54 p.m. Not one day. Not one day, you can look at my phone. And now time span, he did not send me a text. Drive an hour to come see me. Or call me to check in to say that I'm proud of you. Or to say that I love you. Not one day. No one does that. Who does that? <laughs> Danny was humble. He was selfless and caring. His sharp wit was on point in any situation. He was the epitome of the most caring son, brother, uncle, nephew, cousin, and friend. Danny knew how much we all loved him, but will always be the sadness in my heart is I don't think he saw himself the way that every person who had the privilege of knowing him saw him. If he saw him in only a fraction of how he saw him, he could have been Superman. As his big sister, I stand here today as God is my witness and say, I could not be prouder of the man Danny became in the life he lived. I will miss him chiming in on the group family text. I will miss our sidebar text between just him and I making fun of everyone. <laughs> I will miss being in his presence, not feeling any pressure to entertain or even talk, just being with him. I will miss the things we talked about just last week that we were going to do this summer. He wanted to go to Lancaster for the day. We were going to go wave runners, wave runners, top golf, and a Phillies game. We all have our struggles, our internal conflicts, and our own personal demons. There is not one of us in this room does not struggle at some point in our lives. Danny was no exception. Danny's struggles never changed the core of who he was, which was pure goodness. My family and I spoke, and we don't want to shy away from some of Danny's struggles. Awareness is powerful. He recently shared an essay with my brother Ryan and my brother Michael that he wrote for his nursing school applications. We thought it was very important to share some insight. This essay captures the internal struggles and the pure goodness Danny represented. We all have a story. In Danny's words, At 34 years of age, nothing has been more satisfying, satisfying and rewarding than being honest. My journey through life has brought me to this point and I feel I would be doing myself a disservice to not tell the story truthfully. For as long as I can remember, I never felt completely good about myself. Where did that come from? I don't know where it came from and I don't think the answer is relevant. But what I know is relevant is where the feeling has led me and who it has shaped me into today. As I look back on my life, knowing what I know now, the two most ideal characters char 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 <laughs> uh, I lacked were hope and faith and hope. I had no faith in myself, and I certainly had no hope for where my life was going or where the person I was going to become. For several years, I tried to mask these feelings by drinking and using drugs. My mind told me on a daily basis that I had found the answer to all of my problems. I was absolutely blind to the fact that I was ruining my life and causing more pain for myself. 
The thing that brought me the most relief brought me the most pain and misery. In only a few sentences, I have attempted to explain the disease of addiction to you. The disease is powerful, relentless, and disastrous. The two greatest people I've ever known are my parents. I could write a book on, amazing, on the amazing people they are in terror. Please say that one. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Thank you. They possess the strength they know and the ability to put aside all their problems to serve the ones they love. My father, like myself, suffered from the disease of addiction. He died when I was 27. I never saw him take a drink in my entire life. He suffered the same disease that lies to you, that tells you an escape is only an arm's length away. That mental fight that takes place on a daily basis, the urge to choose between good and bad. Having that disease almost destroyed his life, but as a young man, he chose to fight the disease and accept life as it comes. He fought cancer for nearly 20 years of his life. He never complained, was never an absent father, never pointed fingers, and most importantly, never picked up the drink to escape all the pain he was going through. For the last few years of my father's life, I was by his side, and I helped my mother with taking care of him. To this day, I've never been more proud of anything than being able to take care of him. I didn't do it perfectly, I didn't do it always willingly, but I always did it because I know the feelings he felt. Me discussing addiction wasn't just to the point to point out that I used a substance to help me feel better. I wanted to point out that being in an addiction causes vulnerability and it makes you appreciate the help that people give you. Up to the point of taking care of my father, I never knew what I was supposed to do with my life. The satisfaction and gratitude that shined from my dad when I was when I would take care of him and prove to me that I was put on this earth to help others at their most vulnerable point. About one month prior to my dad passing, he said to me he was scared. He never, he, he never, he never said he was scared and it showed me he knew how sick he was. My only response to him was, I'm proud of you. The memory of that moment gives me strength to get through my darkest times. I could see how happy he was that I said that to him and I feel he needed to hear it. Life goes by so fast and it gets hectic. I've been through some of the greatest pain, but I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And I'm thankful for it. It taught me that people suffer all around us. It doesn't take much to help improve someone's situation. I know that I can't control most of what happens in my life, but I know that I can control the impact that I have on those around me. Whether it be this goal or the next, I will accomplish this goal. I will impact the lives of the people who are at the most hopeless. The relationship I have with my father drives me on a daily basis. I wake up most mornings and I doubt myself for what I'm trying to accomplish, but I finally have hope and faith that I can make a great impact on a lot of lives. And I can come to first. Accomplishing this goal is the most important thing in my life, and I dream of the satisfaction. Uh, uh, Daddy would have been the greatest nurse in the profession. Daddy said peace. I truly feel the ages with my father watching Eternal Eagles games. <laughs> Daddy, until we meet again, I will continue to make you proud. I will think of you every day. I will talk to you every day. It was an honor and a privilege to be your sister. One will forever be grateful.